Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week. We hope you enjoy the episode. Now, this is going to be a little bit confusing for those of you watching or listening, but Tony and I haven't done this, as in sit down in a room together to record an episode, for about a month. No, it's like two. <laughs> well, two months or two yeah. years. No, 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 it feels like two years. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen you physically in the flesh for... Six weeks, I'd say. F- we've easily been here, not been here, easily oh, we- nearly two months. But yeah. Yeah, the last time I saw you was in Spain. I mean, we're, that was a month ago. Such international men of mystery. Yeah. We just happened to be all over the world and not recording together, but still somehow releasing episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're back in our bread and butter. We're back at it. Yeah. Well, only for a couple of weeks. And then, <laughs> and then the we're off again. Yeah. Oh, my God. I have got to be honest, Tony. I'm tired. <laughs> like <laughs> You look tired. I feel really tired. Yeah. I would like to just sit down for a second and just not You're do very down much. Now. I am sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I sit down too much. You know what I realized the other day? I climbed out of a car, Range Rover. We're going to get back to it in a second. Lovely. Exceptionally comfortable uh. but as i got out i was still the shape of a car seat even though i was standing outside of the car my body has molded itself to car seats because the last six weeks since i last saw you it's all i've done is sit in cars do you because you, <laughs> this happened to me and it, it probably started happening to me when i was about your age do you like half moan and groan when you get out of cars now? Oh do you God. make like noises? Main channel audience <laughs> will know that this is something that's that's been happening for about five years. I cannot I cannot not get in a car and not go, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, and if you haven't noticed it, go back and watch main channel videos. Every time I get in the car, I go, ugh. Like there's like a noise. Or, and I'm like, that's so bad. Yeah. doesn't happen when I get out. It happens to you when you get out of a car. Oh mate, uh, like and and the noise is, and older people, my age, late thirties, forties, will probably late be able thirties, forties, no, no, sixty five. No, <laughs> we'll be able to relate to this. That the noise that you make as you get older just gets louder and deeper. <laughs> it's like a oh, as you get, and it's not it, depending on what car it is because if it's a like a like a Porsche or Ferrari or Lamborghini or McLaren, it's not so bad getting in because you fall in. Okay, but it's when you get out. I mean, it's a. Uh, and it's not dignified, mate. You sort of roll out. You know what I mean? I, when, I, when I have to get out the GT3, I have to push on the seal to get myself out the seat. Otherwise, you end up on the floor. Yeah, it's just not dignified. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I've got all this money, and I can't even get out of the car. You, can't even get out of the car. <laughs> you should, you should hire not even a butler, like a a car exiting executive. Uh, do you know what I need? Ah, oh, I've just, I've done it. Go I've, on. I've made my millions and millions and millions. I need to create something that can lift me out of the car <laughs> and transport me to the pavement, pavement like, dignified. Like, like a Stena stair lift. Yeah. But for cars, <laughs> if you're not from the UK, I mean, it's a stair lift. I don't know why, I didn't have to yeah. shout the brand. We're not sponsored by Stena. There are other car, no, what's called chair lifts available. But yeah, you see them in old people's homes, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so yeah, actually, it's, it's kind of a genius idea. <laughs> There was, I remember, I think he was a friend of my parents, or at least my parents knew of him. Mm. He was a, he was either disabled or maybe a amputee or something. There was something in the sense where he didn't have the use of his legs. This poor guy, and he yeah, was yeah. Uh, a, a horse racing enthusiast, I think. Anyway, long story short, he had a Range Rover that had been customized for him so that he was able to not only access and drive it, but it would lift him out of the sunroof so he could watch the racing. That's amazing. I mean, that's you don't see that very often, huh? There was that Ford GT as well that was owned by a guy who was sadly in a wheelchair, but had, had somehow, I can't remember if they'd redesigned it or changed something so that he was able to drive the new age Ford GT. Well, I sold a car to a man last year in two comp. Same thing, wheelchair user. And as he picked it up, I sort of felt obliged. Like, I said, do you need a hand? Do you need help? No, no, no. I mean, he was almost offended that I asked him yeah. if he needed any help. I, ca- I cannot believe how quickly he got in the car. I mean, he got in the car quicker than I did, than I could. <laughs> he just threw himself in, bless him. And he had hand controls. Never, like, he had hand controls. The, yeah. the car had to have... Um, Hand controls fitted. Okay. I mean, legend. It's been weeks. It's been months. Your hair has grown since I last saw I need to get it cut, actually, yeah. because that was the last time I got it cut just before I went away. Okay. Oh, well, that's how long it's been that you basically yeah. got dreadlocks. It, 
Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Even you've got longer hair. I know. We I don't mean, think you could grow that long hair. <laughs> we put on hair, don't be rude. <laughs> so I'm back for a couple of weeks, basically. Uh-huh. This is kind of in between my Monica trip. So I brought Vicky and our daughter back to the UK, flew back with them. I've got a couple of things to do here. I had an awesome gig with Breitling and, and I went to a great gig with Porsche at the weekend. And I got a few bits of activities. Then I go back down to Monaco, pick up the GT3. I got a big adventure to drive it back on. So yeah, we're here for another couple of weeks doing these regular episodes. We'll try and bank a few more. And we might, there might be some quirky, well, actually we know there's going to be some quirky episodes ahead because next week... We are attending our first ever press event as Behind the Glass. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've never done one. You've never been to a media launch. No. And we're going together to the Maserati UK press day. Mm. So this is super exciting. So we literally, as I say, we've been accredited. How to make friends and influence them. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till I get there. <laughs> we've been accredited as the Behind the Glass podcast. And we're going to go along and we're going to make a, a sort of dedicated episode of taking Tony on his first press day. And we're going to record it sort of in the cars as we jump in and out of different models yeah. and experience them because you basically haven't experienced new era Maserati. I haven't driven the, the MC20 MC20. There's going to no. be the Grecale or the to Charlie or whatever that car's called. I is that still the McLa- is that the the McCann rival, the McCann, little McCann so I'm rival. Actually intrigued about that car because I'll end up selling them. In I'm it. super intrigued, yeah, yeah. and I've also always wanted to drive. Is it the Levante Trofeo that got the the was it the Ferrari V8 in it? Or the, uh, at least the detuned yeah, Cali T engine. I think so, yeah. So I, they're, they're, I'm excited. So that's going to be yeah. a whole quirky episode. Um, and there's some other cool stuff ahead. So yeah, make sure you subscribe. And make sure you go and follow us on Instagram. Wow. Because Behind the Glass is now on Instagram and on TikTok, by the way. Uh, we'll be posting little teaser clips and reminder uh, shots from various episodes. I'm just going to look at it here. It's Behind the Glass underscore underscore podcast. Perfect. Behind the glass, Has underscore, underscore, underscore tick podcast. Yet? It hasn't got a blue tick yet. We're, <laughs> we're working on that. Um, but anyway, dude, what's been going on? What have you been up to in all these weeks and months that I haven't seen well, you? Well, all sorts, mate. I've been out in the... I've been out in the GT3. I went to Nürburgring in it the other week. Lo- inspired by my success. Um, not, yes, not yes. Not overly, as in my, my <laughs> f- a group of friends of mine go there all the while. Okay. And I just went with them. I wanted to take the Porsche and I wanted to experience what it was like there. It's amazing, as we know. Um... I also wanted to go because I, I I'm actually I don't really know I don't really want to say this but I'm actually starting to become really attached to that place like I it, it's just it's a bit of a bug yeah like when you yeah. when you start to get it and I'm not saying by any means I know exactly where that track goes but I, I am getting there I've been there four times now or the, the the fourth time I've been there. And this last time, I had just the best weekend, you know, like um, I'm slowly getting to know where it goes, I'm stretching the legs of the Porsche now, um, uh, uh, which is incredible uh, on that on that track. Um, you feel confident when you go out, like you sort of, you oh, set off on that start line going, oh yeah, let's have it. Yeah, yeah, li- okay. literally I go... Flat, yeah, basically, flat, yeah. or as fast as I can. The problem is, is, is everyone has their different interpretations of flat, of course. But fast enough that the only people that come past me now are the the real quick local lads and the taxis. So um, fast enough, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and have you to get fast enough? Did you have any scary moments? <laughs> um, I, I I've been fairly lucky because I, I've got like i said i've got some pals that go there all the while and they <clears throat> a couple of them come out with me over the weekend and it really helps when you've got a reference point because as most of you all know and you know there's so many blind crests and blind corners and you know you go around a corner and in your in your normal capacity you would just lift because you don't know what's over the top you know you go over the top and there's a sharp left or a sharp right but when you've got someone in the car and you remember the corners and it is flat after a couple of times and then there's little points around the track that unless you're shown them, you, you would never ever know they're there. Like little boards and little dots and little markers around where you turn in and you break and get on the power there. And the, the, the problem with the Nürburgring as well, it's like because it's 
a, a, a toll road, basically. It's not, although they say it's a racetrack in inverted commons, it's not, it's a road, mate. It's not really a racetrack. So when you take a corner, you think, oh, I'll plough that in our wood on a normal track but you're doing it wrong. So on the next corner, you're not set up right for the next corner. And I can think of so many different corners around the track where if it was a normal racetrack in this country, I'd take the corner completely differently as if I would at the Nürburgring because of the bumps and, the, sure. you know, the, 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 just the way of the, because it's a very flowy track. You have to be on the right side of the track to carry the speed into the next corner mainly because if you're not and you're going fast, you're going into the wall. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just, it's just... Straight into the wall. You're, no literally, option. you're going yeah, into yeah, a wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no... Like, at least on most racetracks, if you get it wrong, there's some runoff and you can half sort it out and the the road's big enough. But, but at the Nürburgring, like, it is not forgiving. Well, cause especially yeah, if you've got confidence, you're going so fast or, or fast 160 enough, mile yeah. an hour yeah yeah the, the, more, you know that is a big crash you know it's very hard to correct I'm things the car yeah. Off. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it's all over yeah like yeah. that like the there's a um, um there's a corners at the start of the start of the track called hats and back and as you come out there you've then got the big fast straight and there's a really fast left and um i'm 160 down that straight now which is fast i know there are cars that do it faster but, but that's fast enough down there and actually, that's a good point because often our one, I wouldn't say a complaint, but one observation about GT3 and GT3 RS is obviously in a straight line compared to lots of other modern sports and supercars that are now turbocharged or supercharged or whatever. Yeah. It, it, it can let itself down in a straight line. But at least in my hands, that car does not feel too slow at the ring. Like, were you going 160 going, oh, I just, I wish I was in a 2 RS. I wish I had a bit more push. Well, the the, the, the problem is with the turbocharged cars, I'm sure they, you know, the quick lads in the GT2s and SF90s and stuff, I'm sure they're at 175, 180. But they're not turning into that corner as quick as I am. As in, you know, they've got to scrub some more speed off. Unless, uh, you know, unless they're proper pro drivers, then they're fine. But, the speed that you carry in the GT3 in particular and, and these modern Porsches, the, the new 3 RS, is insane around yeah, the corners, yeah, the yeah. turn-in speed. And I briefly sent it to you in, on WhatsApp. I, I, I still cannot believe how well that car turns in for a road car. And I, and I, from what I've driven, there's not many cars I haven't driven. I haven't driven a better road car that turns in better than that. Yeah, yeah, the 992 GT3. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I haven't driven the new RS yet, and I'm sure because that'll have the same suspension, but it's just got more aero. So obviously, that will turn in better. But for road cars, I mean, they're incredible. The just all the Porsches in general, and the way that they they ride on track. So I had a mega weekend. Um, <clears throat> I'm going back there. <laughs> I, I mean, I am going to write what a car off there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. One, I mean, I just hope you don't hurt yourself. I mean, if you write off a car, then at least we can joke about it forever. <laughs> um, so just make sure you don't hurt yourself. But yeah, funny you should mention 3RS. Uh, I mean, by the way, I haven't recorded an episode in two months. Straight back to Porsche loving. Welcome back to Behind the Glass. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, GT3 RS, because obviously whilst... Whilst we were apart, I did that event in Portugal where I saw that 3RS on the road yeah. being driven around. It was a, an amazing event in Porto, 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 um, supercar gathering. And there was a 992 GT3RS in the car park. And I thought this is going to be mega and I want to follow it on the road just to see what it's going to be like. Because we've yeah. said it from day one. That, is it even going to be a road car? It's so insane. and looks like a race car and it's set up like a race car. What would it be like on the road? And so I followed it for quite a while, being driven by two young guys. We put on at the lunch stop and I went to find them immediately. I was like, I did notice you were avoiding quite a lot of the, the bumps in the road. Um, how stiff is it? And they were like, oh yeah, it's pretty stiff. Um, uh, yeah. But they said, look, it's, you expect it, right? It's, yeah, it's an RS. Like it's yeah. what you're kind of signing up for. Yeah. But it is fairly stiff. Yeah. So they were having a good time. Uh, they said that really the car is so dialed into the tarmac that it's just begging for corners at one stage because we had police escorts in Porto, so we were we wow. were not we were not holding back. Like Milia Milia. Yeah, yeah, literally a similar vibe. I wow. said I said it really felt like Milia Milia at some stages, and we were along the riverbanks and. We must have been going, I don't know what, like, not that fast, but, like, fast enough, because the police at one stage really wanted us to get out of the city. Um, was you was, in your GT3? No, I was in the 360. Right, fine. And there was a fast right-hander. <laughs> I'm trying to think what was in front of the 3RS. 
maybe like an AMG GT or something. I can't remember. Anyway, so off we went. We all launched it. The police like, just get out of here, crack on. And the fast right hander came off. So I'm like, like down the gears, heavy brakes. Three hours in front of me just went, just went round. Went around the corner. Yeah. Dude, it was unbelievable. I was like waiting for him to pop into the river. Oh yeah, he didn't even notice. He was like, oh yeah, what was there was a corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um yeah, that will be very interesting. But we saw loads of them at Jump. That was one of the They're all around now, aren't they? AMG Black Series, which I've I've got a little bit of a love affair with. I will try and have one of them one day. Um there was a couple of them there as yeah. well. So um, it's just a really, really cool place. I'm going to go and spend a bit more time there. It is vibe. I think even if you're nervous about taking your car out, you don't have a car that you think could or should go out. First of all, you're kind of wrong because when you go, you'll see that every anything, single, anything, anything goes. Anything goes. Yeah. But it is just a cool place to be, especially yeah. when the weather is good, to go down there on a weekend and just sit out and have a have a drink or have a burger or something like that and watch the cars and be part of the atmosphere. It's just super, super cool. Like if you're even passing by, it's worth it. Because also the country and the roads around the neighborhood are just stunning. I was just about to say that we could almost put together, I know we've half mentioned this before, but we could almost put together a behind the glass Tour. 100%. Go and do them lovely little roads around there, a little bit of Luxembourg, and then spend a couple of days at the ring and come home. I mean, Watch for the most space. people, what, what a trip. Yeah. <laughs> but look, speaking of our experiences and cars that we've driven, etc. Uh, obviously, whilst I was down in Monaco, I had this new V8 Range Rover Sport yeah. as my daily to waft around it. you liked that, did you? Well. You went to school in them. Well. Not that age, but. No, I did go to school in Range Rover Sport. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I didn't go to school because I was at boarding school, but I got picked up from school every now and again yeah. in the range of a sport. Um, so I drove new sport for the first time in Spain last year, and we drove the... Actually, I didn't drive the V8. I actually spent all time driving the V8. Of course he did. And I drove the... I had any of them. I drove the hybrid. I think the diesel hybrid, I think, is the one oh. that I drove. So I was super excited about having the V8 range of a sport in the south of France. Is it hybrid? No. It's the full V8. Right. I didn't gel with it. Why? So, firstly, the new Range Rover Sport is massive. I had I totally didn't notice it on the launch event. It's bloody huge. So well, what SUV isn't? Big SUV. You're well, joking. And every new car is bigger and bigger, but old generation Range Rover Sport was a nice size. It was an appropriate size where you could get away with slotting it in supermarket car parks, underground car parking spaces, street parking it, where Vogue has always been ostentatiously large. The beast. Hard to do in those situations. Yeah. But Sport was always, that was the whole thing, right? Get the baby one. This car, I mean, even like Paul Wallace, who's a parking master and often mocks my parking, even admitted this is a awkward car to park because it's got the four wheel steer yeah the four wheel steer is very aggressive yeah so when you're maneuvering it between a very tight space you overcook it you overcook it mm. and then it's it's so big that well yeah i i really struggled with its size i did check the dimensions okay millimeter wise it doesn't sound a lot but it is obviously bigger than old sport it's, but it's just got boxier and bigger to the point where it feels large. It feels like, and I don't personally think old sport ever felt large. Right. This feels large. Then with just the V8, so no hybrid stuff and big, hunky, heavy V8, it felt a bit cumbersome. Like, of course, on the motorway, you give it full beans. It is fast. It is fast. But it's dead quiet. Yeah. Dead quiet for V8. Yeah. At slower speeds, it's just a bit, oh, just a bit like, oh, come Lazy. On lazy mm. very lazy and super thirsty like unbelievably thirsty it's got like what a 90 expect, liter though? tank i guess i did expect some of this but not as bad because it's not an sv or an svr i'm going to come on to the newly unveiled sv in a second this is their like bog standard v8 right it's theoretically yeah, nothing special yeah but their old bog standard v8 that no one ever used to buy because they just buy the svr was exactly the same and it's the same with the the v8 diesel that they no longer make because it was so thirsty compared to the the v6 equivalent like what's the point well, you might as well have the is, SVR or the three litre one. So this is exactly what I was trying to get onto because right. the car itself, aside from the engine, lovely. Yeah. Lovely bit of kit. I'd still have so the big one. So it should be a hundred odd grand. 100%. But <laughs> I, I, and I would still have the big Range Rover over it for sure. Me too. 
But I don't understand that engine, especially with the fact that Land Rover, like Jaguar, are about to go all electric. It's a different world, a different era. Okay, market specific, I understand in America, I understand in parts of the Middle East or certain parts of the world, the V8 might be still attractive. And that's the problem, mate, I think as well. I uh, think like, you know, these manufacturers that make a car for the world now. But why sell it in the UK? There's plenty of cars that we know. Why that, not? Well, here we don't get a manual M3 competition, for example. So why not? That V8, not only as you say, no one buys it. No, so in general, I mean, the previous model, no one used to buy. So why is that on offer? And secondly, I just don't think it's anywhere near as good. I actually am going to say it. I think it ruins the car slightly. I genuinely have stepped away going, I don't think I really like the Sport anymore. So what would you have? I'd have the big one or I'd have the, the hybrid. The, the, the petrol or the diesel hybrid. I don't even know which one I drove. That's what's so ridiculous. Yeah. It was such <clears throat> a great and uh, easy experience in Spain. I don't even remember exactly which engine. All I knew it was this hybrid. I don't know what the actual combustion engine part uh, of it was because yeah. the hybrid technology was so good. It just blended and merged into one. It was probably the 440E or the 400E. I think it was the 510E. Yeah. That's the petrol one, isn't it? I think it was the 510E. Well, there's, there's a 400 four e as well. So, uh, and obviously because of... Uh, there's a lot of people at the moment buying them sports, the hybrid ones, as using them as company vehicles because the company car tax is decent on hybrid cars at the moment. So, um, it was the 510 either. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. I know they do lot, they do different variations of the E don't they essentially. Yeah, so, yeah, of and course. then there's mild hybrid, but like I said before, uh, if, if I was having the sport and the Range Rover, not for a company vehicle, but if I was having, I still have the diesel me. Yeah. Cause I think yeah. that diesel engine, I know it's a BMW engine now, but that's a cracking engine for that car. I just think, I just think, yeah, it, as I say, I, I just didn't didn't gel with it because of because of the engine. And yeah. I, th I think in other shapes. So all I'm saying, if you've got a V8 <laughs> a Sport coming, get rid of it and <laughs> quickly reorder a hybrid. But I think if you've got one coming, it's still like the the le the weights on Range Rover Sports are insane at the moment. Yeah, right? I mean on on the used market, there's millions of them. Yeah. Not not talking about the, the the V8 one, but in general, there are millions of them around. So For sure, um, they're definitely not an over list car now. There's loads of them. So, but <clears throat> like we've said before. I would definitely, if I had a choice, I'd have the big car. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in the previous model, I would have, I would have had Always the sport. sport. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, we said as much. So, yeah, yeah I was just a t a t a left a tad disappointed. That, as I say, everything else was lovely. The interior is a super nice place Did to it break? be. Did it break? Yeah. No. Entertainment system all right. Oh, no, everything was perfect. perfect. I had massage seats. The drive to and from Monaco, glorious. Yeah, it's perfect, isn't it? Oh, my God. Yeah, I had yeah. radar guided cruise control. The lane assist isn't the best. No. It's a little bit twitchy, but radar guided cruise control, fantastic. Sound system, amazing. So comfortable. Like loads of visibility. I had great uh, glass sunroof, beautiful ivory interior, like huge armchair seats, cubby holes for everything. What, like I, It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was just on the twisty, narrow south of France roads and the car parks that I was like, this is just a bit. Yeah, it's just, not the right car for not that. Quite, though, no. it? Which is why they make like <clears throat> um Uruses and stuff like that now because they're for they're for that they do I both guess. essentially. I but guess. when why we're talking about aided cars by the way and assisted braking and lane assist, I'm driving the new <clears throat> RS3. Oh nice. Um I picked it up last week, so I mean, used it at the weekend. I mean I genuinely nearly had a crash this morning because of the um brake assist. Brake assist. I was uh, because I normally turn it all off. Sure. But in the Audi, it's a pain in the ass. Every time you stop the car and turn the car on again, you have to go back into the menus and re-turn it all off. And I, di I didn't do it this morning. And I was driving down the motorway, and I saw long before the, the traffic was slowing and people started to brake a bit harder. So obviously I saw that and broke harder. The car decided that I hadn't break, broke hard enough. So as I'm moving lanes, I moved lanes, the car just slammed its brakes on. No. I mean, I, I genuinely, mate, nearly had a crash. <gasps> Stupid car. But mate. it's not the first time we've heard of or thought about safety systems actually being more dangerous than safe. Well, this is, this is why as well, that these man one of the reasons why these manufacturers, we've said this before, that a car can drive on its own. Now. They have the technology to drive on its own. There still needs to be someone behind the wheel for these reasons, because yeah. there will be a crash. 
For sure. Oh, I, I think there have been, haven't there? Absolutely. I'm sure there have, yeah. It's sometimes they can be way too intrusive. Too sensitive. And, uh, yeah, and as I say, like I've had I've definitely driven some cars where it's really good. Like, yeah. like sometimes where where, where it is generally aids your experience, but yeah, and that sounds terrifying. Uh, I say, that wasn't low speed either, yeah. by the way. I was doing sixty mile an hour. Yeah, yeah. But and I saw slams the, on the brakes. And then it literally just stamps the brake, goes beep, 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 and stamps ah. the brakes on. Scared the life out of yeah, me. That's terrifying. It's terrifying. That's, that is terrifying. <laughs> Flipping out. Well, well done for making it here. I thought you were gonna talk about lane keepers, because if you don't turn it off on a small British lane, then you're sort of going around the corner and suddenly goes, Oh, you're you're out of the lane, and it swerves halfway yeah. around the corner, which is but terrifying. That's, that's another thing as well. Yeah. It does that as well. So you drive down the road and then the car will just bring you back or bring you back the other way, depending on where you are. Into the middle of the road into oncoming traffic. It's dangerous, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, for now I switch it all off. I think it's a it's a bit too intrusive. But back to Range Rover Sport, because obviously what's just been announced, we touched on it a second ago, the new S V. So they've they've ditched the R, Monica. Because SV is kind of like almost like a new sub-brand of itself. We saw it with the big Range Rover SV. Have you seen the new JLR branding? The new yeah, the new logo. Yeah, oh, it's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I mean, because where are we going to see that? Is who the cares, question. Yeah, well, I think you know who. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> well, I do kind of care because they're two of my favourite brands. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know where we're going to see that logo. So I'm less. <laughs> less about it. Uh, but Range Rover Sport SV. I jotted down some of the figures. Yeah. 626 horsepower from one of those, as we said, mild hybrids, sort of yeah, hidden yeah. hybrids. It's the big BMW 4.4 liter V8. MHEV, as they say. One of the last combustion engine Range Rovers, full stop. Right. Because Sport will soon, well, there's Range Rover EV, I think, comes next year. Then we've got Evoke and Discovery are going EV. Anyway, so one of the last combustion engine Range Rovers. There's going to be a limited launch edition version, which gets carbon ceramics, carbon wheels, and a carbon bonnet, plus other things, which makes it 70 kilos lighter Good. than a standard Range Rover. Um, two and a half thousand kilos, as we would expect. Mm. And I'm hearing a price tag for the limited car of nearly 200 grand. Yeah, well, I heard the other day <clears throat> that the the normal car is 170. One, so that non-launch edition car is yeah. 170. 170 with some options on it. 170 grand. So they're going after Urus and Cayenne Turbo GT but, and DBX and... Uh, yeah, well, they're certainly not going for... Uh, I mean, I, I'll be amazed if they mass produce that car. I, I've heard another thing. I don't know if these Land Rover dealers know about this, but apparently this invitation only... The new SV. I thought it was for the launch edition car. Maybe it's the maybe. I, th- I think maybe the launch edition car, yeah. is a limited run, invitation only. Yeah. I, I I I can't I can't remember exactly, but I think I think there's yeah there's a it's something like yeah. that. Um, where for sure yeah the first handful of cars at least. Grand, mate. That's I insane. Mean, isn't it's it? insane. And yeah. at that point, oh. well, let's wait and see because they're claiming that it's it's been heavily engineered. This is a really sort of What's a special. Well, the, the the actual chassis, the body, like there's a lot of work that's yeah, gone fair. into it to make it very dynamic yeah. and very engaging. So, if it is something that can compete with Euros DBX Turbo GT, then fair play, I guess. At but that does that price, make but does, th- does that make the current SVR Range Rover unbelievable value for money now? Potentially, because I, I, I I've got a four year old one in stock that's early 70s that's insane isn't it it's 100 grand cheaper yeah at that point it's crazy yeah and for potentially a better engine well it's it's gonna it, i mean they're still pop and bang at that point yeah you know th- this would be dead yeah in terms of emotion and sound this will sound like a black series like that Merc black series. Oh, yeah, yeah it'll, it'll be, be dead dead quiet flat lane fat plane crank m5 yeah engine. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I have dead. to say though i think it it looked good, the new SV. They did enough tweaks because it's been a bit controversial, the new sports looks. Yeah. Having now spent three weeks on it, I kind of really enjoy it. But they ju- they've tweaked it enough that I think visually it's exciting. Let's wait and see. I mean, at that price point, I, I'm like, bloody hell. Like, what, who's going for that? But Well, it's KNGT money. Yeah. It's that money. Yeah. So that's it's, probably what they're going after. It's, 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 it's big money. Because don't, don't forget now, an, uh, an Urus is quarter of a million quid now. Is it? Yes, mate. With some options Spe- on it. Specked up. Yeah, yeah, with some options. They're, What's it list price though? Um, um, is it early twos, 212 okay, or something okay, like that? Or maybe fine. late, late ones, but with yeah, nothing on them. Yeah, 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 like yeah Everyone yeah. puts 40, 50 grand on them. Sure. So. 
Bloody yeah, hell. the things have changed, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, things incredible. have massively changed. Yeah. It's it's insane, and and yeah. I guess positioning of these various cars and things like that. So, uh, anyway, I, I'm intrigued to find out more about Ranger Sport SV for sure. Um, I say they they are talking a big game about it. Um, but but yeah, that number is. Just Did you see that new Golf R limited edition oh thing that was sixty six grand? God. I mean, that is. Excuse my language. That is a piss take. That is a total piss take. That what was it called? Was it called the thirty-three or the three hundred? Something edition, three hundred edition or something. What is that all about? I don't know, mate. Let's I see mean, what was actually on it. That it? that is them. I mean, they literally just put leather and a few bits and pieces in it. That is them. Sixty-five grand Golf R three 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 edition. Yeah. It's the most the powerful, expensive, and exclusive version of the Golf yet. It comes with an raucous Akrapovich exhaust. Brilliant. Or oh, a uh, Krapovich. Uh, yeah. Uses the same turbocharged 2 litre four cylinder uh, as the standard Golf R, but power is uprated to 328. Wow. In, an increase over the 319. So, <laughs> oh, nine horsepower more. Um, can reach a top speed of 167 miles an hour, 0 to 16 is 4.6. Gets all the standard equipment on the R, including the special exhaust. And a set of 19 inch Esther Real wheels yeah. matched with semi slick tyres. Brilliant. I mean, that is, a, that is insane. So that is like it? their club sport R thing, basically. It's just them being led. Who's paying 65 grand for a goal? Someone will, mate. Especially when you think about the RS3. I mean, yeah, as you say, someone will, because then it'll become a collector. Yeah, but an, R, an, R, an, an, an RS3 is not a goal far, it's a step up. I mean, my, my RS3 I've got now is a four sprung edition, so with everything, everything on, on it. Everything on it. And it's a, like early 60s. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, bloody hell! But but it's not even a little bit better than than that. No, but I, I mean, it's but that is step a, up in a car. That is a collector car, and that is a manufacturer going. We know we can sell these to the group of Volkswagen enthusiasts. There's a market here, of crazy enough people who are sitting at home thinking, "Oh, well, that's going to go up in money. It's super limited, super but small." They just run. don't. I mean, look at that Club Sport in the seven point five or the set, the Mark Seven. But was that go on? Sorry, that that that, that two door one. Yeah, with the yeah, cage yeah, with in the, the cage back. in the back. I mean. But initially, people were asking 10 over, 4 and 15 over, but they're not overs now. Mm. You know, so they're not really a collector. I mean, if there's a delivery mile one knocking around with still all the protection on it, I'm sure that's probably good news, but people drove them. So that's the that's the car I'd compare that to, that, that manual car yeah. that they only made a certain amount of them and, uh, it, you know, it was for the collectors because that's how that was branded, that car. Sure. And they're they're not that they're not that good. I mean, maybe in thirty years' time, if you wrap it up, it might be worth a few quid. But so 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 is a Ford Capri. Yeah, <laughs> and it's sixty. I mean, oh yeah, it's it's an insane amount of money. But it's yeah. not the first time and not the last time that we're going to see manufacturers just seemingly charge through the roof for uh, for cars that what well, don't make a lot. Well, of it's, it's the it's, it's the market makers. What it is is it's. Uh, it's them looking at the used market. I've said this before. They look at the used market and they go, flipping hell. Yeah. You get a used, there's used gold files on the market with pan roofs and leather. And people are asking 50 grand for them. Right. We're going to make a Larry one. We're going to charge 66 for it. For sure. And we're going to sell it because there's a used one there at 50. Oh, yeah. And, and that's it happens the, uh, right across the board. There's enough people out there being like, oh, is it, as I say, it's a collectible. It's going to go up. It's going to be great. Yeah. Who, yeah. Who, the, it's a bit it probably, hype. it probably won't, but it's hype. Yeah. yeah it's all hype. It's, it's, uh, you get, if you, uh, Mr. Golf R, you always buy the new one, always buy the latest one, and your dealer calls you up and says, they're making this super rare final. <laughs> yeah, bring your money down final straight away, you? Yeah, fine. It's lime green. It's the Zonda all over again. <laughs> 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 well, moving on, because another car that got unveiled uh, in the last few weeks is the new Aston Martin DB12. Oh, we got to talk about that? We do. Well, <laughs> we're not going to talk about it in a lot of detail because I sort of Good. half hinted at it a few weeks ago. I'm off to drive that car soon. Wow. Yes, yeah, so they're actually doing the launch in Monaco. So when I go back after my projects here in the UK, and pick up the GT3, one of the first things I do is drive the DB12 before I actually leave town. Right. Um, so I'm kind of intrigued. I know you're going to be super dismissive of this. And visually, it's not a massive departure for Aston Martin on the face of it. You know, you look at the DB12 and you're like, it's kind of a DB11 with a bigger grill. And I think people felt a tad disappointed by it's it. It's a very pretty car, but I, I always happen to think that... that they are pretty anyway because it's partly the reason why people buy them. And actually, as much as I go in on Aston Martin, a used Aston Martin Vantage now, like that V8 car, is unbelievable value now at 
90 grand or sure. whatever compared when you compare it to a 911 because it's way more money new than the 911 which I don't think it should be I think they should sit very similar because like it's an Aston Martin and you got the badge but the 911 is always the better car but on the used market when they flip back round because the 911 holds its money better they're actually a better prospect because I- they're not quite as good as a the machine. They've got way more character. For sure, and personality. And yeah, of course. So what do you make of this? And they're saying that the DB12 is going to be 185 grand plus options. <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised, mate. I mean... But you think that's too much? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm deadly serious because that's going up against Roma, Bentley Continental GT. Yeah. Okay, Turbo S, you could say. But those two cars are more expensive than that. Even Turbo S list is more than that now. Well, sure. Yeah. But so, so surely that's a good thing because... Knowing Aston in the past, they could have priced that car at 230 grand plus options. That would have almost been not surprising because historically, they've always gone more expensive than previous models. So actually, they seem bang in line with their competitors, which you were just saying with the old Vantages makes a bit more sense because it will depreciate quicker. So mm. fine, we know with Aston there is bad at Porsche with options. So that's going to be a 205 grand car by the time you've done anything with it. But then drive that 3,000 miles, it's suddenly going to be a 165 grand car I think that pricing kind of makes sense. I cannot sit here in my council estate state where I come from and say that 180 grand for a car is good value. No, no. I can't I don't sit mean here and good say, I'm value. so sorry about Well, you've said, you've said worse, for, for <laughs> sure. But I mean, in, in respect to its competitors and this car, of course yeah. it's not good value. It's not a cheap supercar, but... It's not a supercar, isn't it? It's a GT, isn't it? A GT car, Super GT, they call it. What do they call it? Yeah, not Super GT, they call it uh, Ultimate GT or something like that. Right. Or the G- anyway. Um, but but I, I, am, I was relatively pleased when I saw that price point because I was expecting it to be over 200 grand right. knowing how Aston Martin have traditionally priced cars well not just that mate knowing on on what cars have done over the last few years yeah, just I, I just in general I suspect I mean it's 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 a ton it's all the money in the world but if you're trying to buy one of these super GTs say Roma Bentley Continental GT this is the kind of money that you're, you're going to be asked to spend where, where Aston Martin always really let their self down obviously is not the looks and the noise it was the build quality, because it's not very good. Uh, reliability, well, they've sorted that out now because it's got a Merc engine in it. Um, and um, interior quality. I mean, all, all the, the materials they use inside the car were all nice and smelt of leather and loads of cows in there, fair enough. But the infotainment systems have always not been good enough, and I know they've updated it in that car. So this is their whole focus, basically, is that yeah. they've basically said... Historically, Aston Martin's always been beautiful looking cars from the outside. Our whole focus here was to to bring that to the inside, to work yeah. really hard, to scrap the old Mercedes infotainment system. I think that was one of Stroll's first things of how can we have a brand new car with a four-year-old infotainment I'd system. I agree with it. No, 410. Yeah. Yeah, sorry? Yeah, 10, 10 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, not four-year-old. Designed their own new system. That could be interesting. Um, but an entirely new sort of configuration and layout for the interior, new design, new feel, new vibe, um, a step on from the entire rest of the range. So... That really excites me. But is it their entertainment system or have they bring like Bosch in or someone like that? They're claiming it's their own. Whether they've bought it in for someone else, I do not know. But but they're claiming it's their own. Um, And you look at like some things. So obviously we've lost the V12 from the DB11, but they're saying that's saving them 100 kilos at the front um, just in terms of now we're in the V8, the Merc. So no V12 anymore? Well, I think it's coming. In a I think it's coming. Or well, in a DBS or just in a limited run or something like that. You know, the the standard car has got the Merc V8. Yeah. But but I mean at six hundred and seventy odd horsepower. But yeah, I think they're saving the space or saving room to do a special edition V twelve at some point. I mean, that is an incredible engine, that Merc V eight. Well, it's like the it's like the BMW one that we talk about so often. Those two, the Merc V eight and yeah. the BMW Straight Six. Yeah. Just Great, basically crate engines. They're unbelievable the way that you can tune them cars because that engine is on the market at 470 horsepower or 671. Unbelievable. Ridiculous, Or more. It? Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm really intrigued and excited because I love... Aston Martin. I always liked the DB11. I always thought DB11 was a great car. Yeah. And they're saying that this is 
I, we, it's we too spoke soft about, for me, that DB11. A very wafty and uh, lazy. Yeah, but it's a bit like, like a, a Bentley Mango. Continental, though. I think the, the Bentley's way nicer to drive than the... Than the than DB11? The yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're probably yeah, right. It's way more solid on the road. Yeah, maybe because of weight. Yeah. <laughs> Not 500 kilos more, but... Yeah, I, may, maybe you're right. Yeah, for, for sure, but... And it's a nicer place. It was a nicer place to be in the Bentley as well, by the way. The, the Bentley's always been one of the best places yeah. to be, but... I've just still really enjoyed Aston Martin DB models. This is a huge thing for them to bring out a new Fair. DB model. And I think there's a stat saying that this is a 70% new car, where the McLaren 750S, for example, is a 30% new car. So whilst there are visual traits, especially the back end looks identical to the DB11, actually the underpinnings and a lot of this car is brand new. So yeah, I'm going to be driving it in a few weeks. I can't remember when the embargo is, but it's at some point. So there will be content coming and I actually can't wait. Uh, I think I'm going to have to share a car with somebody on that trip. So poor person's going to see me having sort of, you know, imposter <laughs> syndrome all day you should <laughs> you should have bragged me in. mate you could have shared a car with me uh, I'm not allowed to I asked for a plus one I wasn't allowed to oh yeah, really yeah yeah so uh, we'll see who that's going to be um Anyway, moving on, one final new car that I want to talk about. There have been lots of new cars that have launched, but one more that really piqued my interest is the new BMW i5. So this is the f this is the 5 Series as we know it moving forward. Yeah. Heavy push on electric, two different electric motors, one rear-wheel drive, one all-wheel drive. Sort of the engine level, I think, is like around 330-odd horsepower, and the top full whack is 600 horsepower. Mm. They're claiming a range of about 320 to 360 miles, depending on which battery pack so you've got. That means 250. No, so this is the thing, right? This is where I'm going to pull you up on this. So I think they, they claim their range. They give a window. So I think it's like 280 to 320 or 290 to 360, whatever. But based on the iX, BMW iX and Mercedes EQS are the only two electric cars that I've got into drive. And they have said the ranges I've left. And it has been exactly that range right. if not increased until you get the to the only winter. two ix and eqs so you get to the winter to the, the winter, winter. yes yeah, okay fine but i didn't drive them in the winter i'm saying in the summer because also right. they're two cars that if you drive i drove them both hard ish yeah you know actually to be fair i drove the on uh, eqs on uh in november didn't i i think i don't know yeah, I think I, I was, it wasn't warm when I was raining and cold, so it wasn't freezing winter. But what I'm saying is almost all other electric cars are 100 miles less than their predicted range. Those two have been rock solid. So I'm hoping and thinking that at least 300 miles is going to be very achievable in the, in the i5. Um, they've got a combustion engine engine. There's the 520i. So it's not a really big push on electric because they're still making the combustion versions. Well, because they're leading with the two electrics. They're launching with two electrics and then the 520i, which is just like the... But they've got to lead with the electrics though because that's what the governments are saying. So they've got, they got to advertise the electric fires. Don't mean they're going to sell them first. No, but they haven't even announced the hybrid yet, which we're expecting one of the hybrids to be the M5. Yeah. They're doing two hybrids. So I would assume that we're going to get... A mild hybrid uh, though, won't it? Don't you think? I would assume so, yeah. yeah. I, I reckon we'll get a 560i or something like that. Yeah. Uh, like an M560i mild hybrid and then an M5 mild hybrid. A good car. Like uh, which will be mega. I think the car looks ace. And yeah. I, for me, that's a super exciting car because also they're saying we're going to get an i5 touring. Obviously, five series, we've got a touring. Do you know? I mean, I'd be right at that. The, be a lot of money, M61, though. and that's the problem. That's what we grand, always though. come back to. Grand. Oh, mate, it's, I think it's 100 grand, not even like the the entry level one the, the, really? let's check the pricing now the pricing is insane if yeah I it's too much I do really? like the new BMW interiors they've stepped it up again you know with that new big screen that they've got in the new in the, all their new cars oh my new M2 will be here any minute now oh really oh yeah but it should be here this month that's got that new big screen in it yeah everyone slags off BMW they're going a horrible direction I, I love the way this looks and I'm a big BMW fan people like yeah Pay to do it. So here we go. The five twenty i starts at fifty grand. Yeah. So that's the petrol one. Yeah. That'd be For the, the one electric buy. cars. Um, where's the pricing? Hello. Hello. Um, here we go. The i drive e drive forty is seventy three. Twenty five grand more. And the M sixty is ninety six. Yeah, half. it's too much money, mate. It's a problem. So it's, yeah. So this it, is the it, problem. The, the the electric car, the top of the range electric car, is double the price of the 520i. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, that's so the problem, mate. You're going to get the hybrid car's going to come out. It's going to be 120 grand. Yeah. And then the M5 will be 160 grand. No, it can't be 160. How much is an E63 up? these days? Not 160. No, no, no but I, I am making it up, but I'm going it's for about, it. It's about 100, probably 110. They are an E63. Then going to be 100. 
120 grand for an E63S. Oh, well, that's a not 160. No, no, but I'm going large. Why not? <laughs> go, 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 I'm go going big or go home. Because it might be a limited run car. You don't know. Yeah. We have no idea. No, it won't be. And also, if, what's the be. XM? That's 150 grand, isn't it? And a bit more. Yeah. I mean, well, there, that, well, there you go. That, <laughs> <laughs> Here he goes Point again. proven. This is what he does. He pulls in funny faces and them noises when he knows Point I've done proven. it. No, no, no. no, no but <laughs> if there's a... Okay, so hold on a sec. Be serious for two seconds. All right, try. If an XM is priced at 150 grand plus, 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 mm. why is it impossible to think that an M5... Could be similar money. Because it's a whole new car, that XM. And they can price it at whatever they like. It doesn't mean they're going to sell it. Isn't an X5M also circa 150 grand? No. X5M? I'm no sure chance. we were looking SVR at... money, probably one, 120, 120 probably, yeah. But don't mean they're selling at 120, though, by okay, the way. Okay, starts at 127. Yeah. So plus, plus. That's going to be a 135, 140 grand car. I don't think there's many options you can put on an XM, but yeah. But maybe if an one... X5M is 127 grand, surely an M5 is going to be similar money. I oh, think you'll get big discount on, a, on an XM. Just on list on price. A, Just yeah, on list price. Yeah. Like, I think there's discounts on that. Okay, so 175 was punchy. Or, what did I say? 170? <laughs> yeah, that's what you say. You just come out But 140, it. like... Don't forget the top of the range electric is a hundred grand, ninety seven grand. That's a piss take. We've still got a petrol engine car to come through at some point, you know, this hybrid petrol, whatever, which isn't gonna be the end product. I don't know, let's let's wait and see. But I think a hundred and thirty grand plus plus for an M five is not impossible to imagine. The world has gone insane. Car prices are through the roof. And the M five is a flagship product for BMW. Yeah, so it's it's too much, mate. It's, it's, it's What about so the new C sixty three? Did you see that? Yeah, is it 104? 97 grand for the standard plus, car. Yeah. yeah, plus, plus, plus. Yeah, but that's how much a, uh, you know, an, a, an M3 Touring is 100 grand now with all the options but it, on it. But list is at 84 or something. Yeah, yeah. Starting yeah, price yeah. is 84. Merck is 15 grand more yeah. before any options. And Merck aren't all that cheap on the options. I, I would probably say as a standard car, the Merck probably comes with a few more options than the BMW. And don't forget... It's a. It's probably more expensive to make because that's a heavy, heavily hybrid-assisted car, whereas the BMW is still an engine. You know what I mean? So that's probably why they've got to ask a bit more for it. And uh, I mean that is an impressive bit of kit. That new C sixty three. Who knows what it's going to be like to drive? But six hundred and seventy horsepower from a two liter engine with hybrid. I mean that is insane. That's F one tech funneling its way it's down to the road. It's unbelievable. Isn't it? yeah, 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 that's the hybrid they, uh, hybrid powertrain starting to come through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. But I, I say, I really like the way that i5 looks. And if the i5 touring, I mean, but the, you hit the nail on the head. It's pricing. I, at that Porsche event I was at the weekend, I saw like all the Taycans in every spec you would want. And I, I loved about 17 of them. I was like, beautiful, beautiful, Not interesting, amazing. Yeah. The cheapest one I could find was 85 grand. Yeah. And the problem is I know that, well, you're not going to be able to lease that used car on the forecourt. So I'm going to have to be buying it and financing it, at which point you're going to get the most awful rates. They're going to depreciate like a mother chucker. Mm. So it's still my big barrier because I'm, I've am i been talking about it all year that I am sort of tempted to, to dive in and get a little electric car at the moment just to kind of live with it and see, not as my main car, but it's something to run around town in and stuff like that. Yeah, but a little electric car. You don't need a big electric car. No, no, but every time I think about it, that you know, you start at 50 grand. But yeah, that's that's your problem. You look at the price, you look at the prices and you think, well, what electric car can I buy? Oh, right, they're 50 grand. And then you, your mind starts to wander and you think, oh, I could have any petrol car I want for 50 grand. But that, literally, that's what yeah, I got I to. Know, yeah, that's Because also, at the moment in electric, hot hatches are still to come. Mm. There's obviously that Abarth, but firstly, that's 35 grand. And well, you've already bought one of them. Everyone maybe, tells me it's maybe. crap. Well, it will be, yeah. yeah. But when you look at your social media, you've already called out all the Abarth dealers. I mean, you probably already bought one, haven't you? No, 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 no. I, I, I was interested because I wanted to know when they're actually turning up. Did anyone come back to you? Yeah, I had about three or four people. Because <laughs> Three or four hundred. With, with the... We've all got one, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, no. Really? The majority of the replies were, it's a load of crap, don't go near it. Yeah. <laughs> that was literally like, the majority of the replies were like, do not get that car. From Fiat dealers uh, or Bath pretty, dealers. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so the hot hatching isn't really there yet. Mini electric, like, because also the, once you start going small, your range is 150 odd miles. Mm. Like that's tight. 
then you look up to like the the super fancy stuff, the Taycans, the e-trons, the EQSs. That's all over they're 100 still, grand. But they're still 200 odd miles though. And they're 200 odd miles. Yeah. So then the real juicy point, the 300, 350 mile range and circa 60 or 70 grand are your, you know, your, your Mustang Mackies, your Hyundai Onics, your Teslas, your... And none of that appeals to me. No, so, I mean, just, just from a visual, like whilst it will be good, I don't want to, I, I want to buy a fun, quirky electric car that speaks to me. I'm, there's still a bit of like, we're waiting for that Alpine. We're waiting for uh, the Lotus Electra. Yeah. I'm excited for that. I'm not waiting um, for that. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like that, that, it's interesting that at the moment we've got these very practical, usable, functional EVs and they've steered away from the kind of, desirable stuff I think for now like when's that new when's that Renault 5 coming where's that I know I mean they've been talking about that for years for ages. where is it yeah I know yeah. so like you know, I want I want the quirky stuff to come back I like that Ionic 6 but I don't know it's how practical one, it is like day, yeah. so uh, that's what I'm waiting for and I think we need more of it now oh Tesla you can have a Tesla no but I'd like death dirt no oh boring as hell oh Tesla don't speak to me at all like what Taycan is still an each one GT maybe, and then the Renault Five, because that Ionic Five's uh, too big and chunky. I, I, I'd, I would, as I've always said, if I had to go out and buy an electric car tomorrow, this is my circumstances. By the way, wouldn't suit everyone. I would go out and buy the Taycan. Yeah. but but it's no good for me. No, no, and it's no good for most people. But but but, but as I said, like it, yeah, that's yeah. the problem. There, there's, and they're more money, I, and it needs there needs to be more attractive. Like I wouldn't mind paying. 35 grand for the Abarth if it did 250 miles it was a bit like but it, it's not I'm paying more for less if you know what I mean of course but that's the whole problem with the electric market new and used you pay a lot more money for less and inconvenience how many times have we said that I still want a Taycan though I do want one yeah but, but you, Cross you Turismo should or Sport Turismo but you should want one it's the mega car there's what's 1500 quid a month isn't it easily yeah yeah of course it's too much money mate too much money way too much money we get 1500 pound a month GT4. Well, if you'd like to sponsor us and pay us fifty dollars, <laughs> we'll run a Taycan. It's a behind the glass podcast exclusive. Uh, well, anyway, look that that is a good place to leave it off because I'm sure we could go on. Well, my uh, two nine six is coming. Oh, is it? Uh, but it's on the lorry. No. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's like like imminent, mate. It's on on the lorry. In oh man, I'm so excited for you. I know you think you're not going to like that car, but I guarantee you, it is such a good car and I speak to everyone about it everyone I speak to I spoke to someone this morning and they said it's a mega car as well yeah. literally like yeah. someone said to me this morning so I, I drove it back from Goodwood the other day and it is a fantastic yeah. car Every I have not spoken to one person yet who doesn't say that the 296 is not their current favourite car yeah. it's bloody amazing yeah but I know you're you're already determined to not like it. No, I just, I, I just don't really have a great need. I'm going to go and do a trip in it. Sure. But I, I just don't have a have a great need for it. Um, but I'm going to give it a chance. But I probably won't have it that long. <laughs> Classic you. Uh, well, anyway, if you want to keep abreast of everything that's going on and maybe even Tony's 296 delivery, you can now follow us, as I say, on Instagram, behind the glass underscore underscore podcast. We're also on TikTok. I think it's a bit more traditional there, behind the glass podcast. Um, TikTok? Yeah, TikTok, mate. What we're is TikTok? We're going to be doing dances next week. Are um, we? And subscribe <laughs> now because, yes, as I say, we've got the Maserati special press day coming up and a few more episodes uh, uh, as the, the year continues and the travel continues. So subscribe now, turn on notifications. Uh, you can follow Tony at Tony Gravel Car Sales on most social media platforms. I'm at Seen Through Glass and we'll be back with you next week. Bye-bye. See ya.